welcome to episode 10 oh my god of the lyrical breakdown already 10 what wow okay so as you know my name is Sio. i'm a singer songwriter actress model poet dj published author dot 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 producer mm -hmm. i forgot that i do that as well i always forget that i do that as well but anyway so in today's episode i'm going to be talking about how to chase produced by myself and dave martian and he also added some vocals throughout the album as well so if you're hearing a voice that is very like husky and sort of bassy that's dave he didn't want me to do the, the low stuff which is a thing we do when we are working together i don't have to do the lows Thanks, Dave. So How to Chase is also one of those songs that has an imperfection in it that I asked Dave to keep because within context of the, the story of the song, it makes sense. There was a stage when we were recording and my phone rang and it just rang once and it made sense. And like the position it is in, in terms of like the lyrics for the song was perfect. And I was just like, we're keeping it, leave it there i don't want to change it i don't want to remove it it's going to live in that place so this is a big story of how to chase so back in the summer um of when i was in between this weird relationship which i tend to call relationship it's a good term i want to put that on t-shirts and clothes one day a relationship of a situation I was in I we me and the English guy had separated split up I mean we've lived separately for what a whole continent and a half between us but anyway so he uh, was busy with his main because we've established Hori and the site oh I was the site because ah! we've established Hori I was the site so um he was gallivanting and having his best life they're doing about thanksgiving and the holiday seasons and the birthdays and the christmases and the what that's with this person anyway so around our summer time because i'm in the southern hemisphere which is christmas time uh i i sat down and i was frustrated because he was in a space where he wanted to to reconcile and i was like okay sure I'll give it a bash um, and only because he wanted access to my voice, which we've established. <laughs> that was all. It was just my throat that he wanted. Which would have made things much better if that's all we ever did and all we ever were. Just so, by the way. By the way. So, I wrote this song in a place of, in that space, when I was kind of annoyed at this, at this thing. And I was a people pleaser back then and I would pour out all of my rage in my work, all of my emotions, a lot more than I do now, um, went into my work. Like my angers, my frustrations, my pain is very evident in the lyrical content of the song. And it's ugly and I felt ugly and I felt like an ugly person for feeling these feelings because I'm a girl and I was taught to be good and sugar and spice and all things nice and be the right kind of person and in that, I also acknowledged my own toxicity in that I deferred two people's happiness over mine and I sacrificed my own joys for others. That didn't work out. <laughs> I'm, this, I'm selfish. Yeah. Please, now, if, if anything, if, if there's anything you take away from this entire series, look after yourself and fill your own cup. Because in filling your own cup, you are content and you're happy. You're not looking to anybody to fill your cup because that's what we're taught that somebody's going to come and complete you. Whoopee! <laughs> Nix! So take care of yourself, sort out yourself, sort out you first, and then give everybody the stuff that spills over. Because it will. There'll be times when it spills over. And then when you also running on, like, hey, 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 yeah, no, you've reached the lid of the cup. Peace, love, and happiness. I need to replenish. Do it. It's fine. Everybody else will be strong. And if they have a problem, leave them. Let them go. Let them go. So I wrote the song at that time. 
And then when Dave and I met to do Torn Tapestries, uh, this song we recorded on the first day. So this was one of the five we did on day one. Because we did like five day one and then four or something the next day. If not the other half. But anyway, this is how it goes. <laughs> When I wrote it so that was how to, how how to chase girls that and like like I said I like the placement of where that ring happened because it happened before I spoke about the false ring this is the lyrical breakdown so first I say splitting fingers on a picture of you splitting figures from the toxins in you so that I had like the image or the, the yeah the image of a picture a photograph a physical photograph in my hands and I saw myself like looking at it over and over and cutting my fingers with it till I bled it's like it's a brutal opening um line and splitting figures from the toxins in you so like that's that that's reminiscent of like science experiments and how you split atoms and molecules and stuff with chemicals right so he felt toxic and it felt like being with him or pursuing anything with him was making me feel poisoned and splitting myself into things that i did not like and exposing elements of myself that i i wasn't vibing with but also exposing my own toxicity at the same time and then I say, choking on the love I wasted on you. Didn't think that you would cheat me of you. 
at the time i didn't know that this was being me being permanent my future self said get out CEO. leave now stop investing i don't listen now i listen hey when i get a ping i'm like i'll say sorry rather than be sorry for myself mm -hmm. i'm good i felt like i was wasting my love on him and i was right uh i felt like it was a waste of my time and energy and i was choking on it because i had committed and i used to be the kind of person i still am to an extent but i've i've, I've cut down on my level of commitment i'm not i'm a I overcommit sometimes. Like once I commit to something, I'm gonna see it through no matter the difficulty, no matter the challenge. So I don't have commitment issues. I'm the kind of person to see something through once I decide. And once I decide to commit to something, I trust and believe I'm gonna finish it. To the point where I because I'm a K drama lover, those who know know. Sarang Sarang. Nah, hangu K drama. Mani 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 jomu no mu no mu no mu sarangeo. So I love, 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 love K dramas. Uh, I'm even learning Korean as a result because I wanna watch them with no subtitles. It's that deep, right? So there were many, and like if you know anything about K dramas and you in that space, those 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 shows can be long. Like there are episodes that there are series where an episode is pushing a feature film length, right? And there's sixteen or twenty of them. And I used to commit to watching that thing throughout, even if I was interested or not, like I'll finish it or finish a book I hate. I hated to leave a book unread or unfinished because it wasn't capturing my attention. I've since learned to let go. That's how much of a commitment I make. Here's like me exposing myself and my blackness right now. There was a job I had to do as a model where they asked, see how, how competent are you as a swimmer? I'm just like, I'm not going to drown, guys. But I'm not super comfortable if my feet don't touch the floor of the pool. Come shoot day. Yo, guys. Yo. So I jump into this pool and I look down. Now, mind you, I'm nearly six feet tall to those who understand feet. For those who understand meters and centimeters, I'm 1.79 meters or 179 centimeters tall. I am not small vertically. I'm small horizontally. I am not small vertically. I jumped into that pool and I looked down. There was space enough for two me's below me and another two above me. And I was just like, yes, this thing is deep. But I shot that thing. That's how much I commit. Terrified, uncomfortable as hell. We shot that thing and I left. And I was just like, yeah, I need to fix that. Just so by the way. So I don't have commitment issues. So once I commit to something and I commit to a person, understand, I'm going to see it through. I don't know if I'm going to do that again. I, it, you definitely have to be worth it and prove it. And I don't know what it's going to take to prove it. So all the best. Then I also said, they don't think that you would cheat me of you. And at the time I meant, um, cheat me of your time. So not allow me to be in your presence or just like the distance between us, not allowing me to or us to be together, right? But in retrospect, <laughs> I learned that he had actually just cheated on me. So you cheated me of you by your behavior and your actions. And then I say, cups and saucers falling from the drawers. Like my tears last night, you never saw. That speaks to sort of the illusion of a home I built um, in my head falling apart. I got that image from Adele's rolling in the deep video where you see the plates and, and cups flying against the wall and I'm just like that's a cool image I'm gonna use it in the song like my tears last night you never saw so in my head metaphorically in a picture that would be me lying next to you and me crying and you not noticing but also in the real time not that I did cry before then but like the tears I felt like I should have shed because of the distance imposed between us and that he did not seem willing to close or allow me to close because there are many times where i was just like can i come through and he was just like no i'm busy or something's wrong and then he'd whinge about oh my life is so busy my mom. <laughs> then i say my hands have lost their feelings you gave me claws now i'm bouncing off the walls right which spoke to like how I felt like I lost my sensitivity and my tenderness and I was just a space of rage. And I feel like the place where we express tenderness 
physically first is with hands so you touch a baby gently you don't claw at a baby so i was just like i don't feel like i can't touch anything right now because like all of my rage is in my hands and i just want to scratch and bite and punch and hit something because i was that frustrated uh and then bouncing off the walls also speaks to the frustration i felt like you feel like you're trapped and you're bouncing off the walls because it's just like this is pointless what i'm feeling is pointless there's nothing i can do about it so it's working on my nerves then the chorus is a repetition of I don't know how to chase you. So I say that a couple of times in the chorus. Because I don't know. Because it felt like I was running after this person. Chasing them. Pursuing them. Showing them that I'm here for them. And they were just like. Hmm. Oh okay. <laughs> then verse 2 goes. All your words of love now have a false ring. Which speaks to how I felt that. Everything he said, especially at the point when I was recording this song, was complete bogus. It was noise. It was nonsense. It was untrue. And I was just like, I bought that? <laughs> oh. And then I say, I was ready to give you everything. And I really was. I was in the process of, of moving. I, was, I had a job in the pipeline. I was going to help him with stuff financially. And he was just like, no. And I was just like, oh, I'm not blonde and blue-eyed and British in London with a fat job. Got it. And that is episode 10 of the Lyrical Breakdown. Nearly there. Nearly there. I have to talk about them two more times. Ah! Lord, help me. Anyway, so thank you once again for uh, tuning into the Lyrical Breakdown. My name is Sio. Peace.